So then down in the comments, I want to know what is the most ridiculous piece of movie memorabilia that you own. Don't worry, it's just me, Adam Caesar. This is Project Black T-Shirt, the channel where we look at a new release or reissue horror movie or movies and pair it with a piece of horror literature that you might enjoy if you enjoyed those films. Uh, please like and subscribe for more videos like this uh, and to see me in more crazy masks. That's actually not true. This is the first time I've worn a mask. If you recognize the creature from our super stupid introduction, uh, you will know that that is the Beast of Blood Island from the Blood Island films. And today we're going to talk about the Blood Island trilogy and uh, the kind of unofficial prequel or official prequel, uh, Terror is a Man. These are uh, Filipino uh, productions uh, directed by Eddie Romero and Jerry De Leon, or in some cases different uh, uh, configurations of Romero and De Leon uh, in producing and writing uh, duties. But these are uh, Filipino films, uh, American Filipino uh, co-productions and releases um, in these uh, these editions, well, along with uh, Sam Sherman's Hemisphere films. They were originally distributed by them, and this beautiful box set was released by Severin Films. Um, we've talked about Severin before, we talked about their Amicus box set, but as you can see from that mask and from a few more items that I'm about to show you, uh, they've kind of really outdone themselves with just the packaging and what comes with this set. So before I talk about the films, I'm gonna just quickly go through all the kind of ephemera that came in the set itself. Uh, I showed you the mask, this is the super deluxe version that is uh, was instantly sold out on Severin's website. Um, as of reviewing this, they have uh, officially sold out of these sets, uh, but you can still get the, the beautiful box sets, which are limited edition to 3,500. Um, there's a couple on Diabolic DVD, and there's some on Amazon, and as always, I'll put the links in the description for those, but um, if you want to know kind of what you can have, or I'm sure there's secondary retailers and stuff like that, but uh, it came with this little pin. We got that Beast of Blood on that pin. Very, very nice. They always do good work with these. Uh, little add-ons. The last one we talked about, I think, was uh, Horror of Party Beach, which love Horror of Party Beach. Um, and then they kind of went for a tiki theme because, as we'll talk about in the films in a second, they, I'm, I'm clearly in a tiki getup. Uh, but Beast of Blood coasters for uh, your cocktail party, where you show um, Beast of Blood and you clearly lose friends. Um, a little uh, the Oath of Green Blood, which is from Mad Doctor of Blood Island. Uh, the film, and then on the back, a kind of a, a, a cocktail mix to make your own. Uh, the Mad Doctor's Green Blood Potion. And then, of course, for those uh, cocktails, you have um, Swizzle Sticks. Swizzle Sticks, the beast pulling off his own head. Kind of the famous one sheet for that film. But we're not going to talk about Beast yet. We're going to go in the order I watch these films. And I watch these films in kind of a weird order. Um, there is the official... Blood Island Trilogy, which is Brides of Blood, Mad Doctor of Blood Island, and Beast of Blood. Uh, and then there was a film that they made in 1959, Eddie Romero and uh, Jerry DeLeon, which is uh, very different from the Blood, uh, the Blood Island films proper, but does feature Blood Island and is kind of a Island of Dr. Moreau uh, riff, Terror is a Man. But we'll talk about that last, because I watched that last, and I think it's actually the most interesting thing in the set, so we'll, we'll, we'll save the best for last. Released in 1968, Brides of Blood is very much... Um, setting the template for what these films are. They are uh, filmed in the Philippines. They, ha they, uh, they have uh, a few foreign actors kind of um, uh, to, to draw in American drive-in audiences. And then they have uh, a largely Filipino cast, largely Filipino crew, um, and, and, and a, a real interesting feeling. These movies, more than anything else, these movies are straight up uh, drive-in exploitation fodder. And they were produced in that way and on the special features, uh, the people who were involved in the films are very much unpretentious into what these movies were. They are business people first, um, but that doesn't mean that they don't have artistic leanings and didn't want to do things in a certain way and infuse a certain feeling in the films. And Brides of Blood is, is, is maybe the kind of platonic ideal um, of what these Blood Island films are, and they kind of change uh, throughout the decades that we're making these movies. In Brides of Blood, we have uh, John Ashley, kind of series star John Ashley, uh, it, playing this um, very similar character throughout all the films. There's not a whole lot of continuity. There's especially not a whole lot of continuity uh, between Brides of Blood and the other two films, or the Island of Living Horror, 
all these movies have very nice reversible slip covers. Um, Severn did a really great job. They've got their kind of their black case game on point. This and Mad Doctor of Blood Island are transfers from the negative. Uh, and I had these movies, uh, these movies hold a special kind of place in my heart because I had the uh, Image Entertainment um, uh, DVD set of them. And I think they were like, they were maybe one of the, among the first DVDs I ever bought. And re-watching these films, revisiting these films this many years later, um, I was very, very much struck uh, in Severin's releases of them that I, I kind of had no idea what the movies looked like or I didn't have a good memory of what the movies looked like because these movies are so colorful and so vibrant and they do all this shooting in these um, in these jungles and rainforests and you get so much production value on the screen and and these these first especially these first two that I'm going to talk about the transfers are so good and so bright and so vibrant um, that when you get to Beasts of Blood, which is just from a print, not from a negative, you can really tell the difference. And I'm not, um, I'm not a super duper or audio visual head guy that's like, oh, I'm gonna go on Blu-ray.com and whine about transfers and stuff like that. I, I, th I think uh, the first two look incredible, uh, and then the third is just kind of a, a, a little bit muted, the colors look a little bit different, the print just looks a little different because you, you know it's coming from a different source. And they're very upfront with that, um, and they found they used the best materials they could to get these films uncut. Because what's interesting about these movies is, even though they are um, they are kind of uh, late '60s, early '70s drive-in programmers, where you kind of modern audiences might have a certain kind of conception of what movies like that are. Uh, they are very violent and and fairly kind of nudity packed. They're very much exploitation films um, in the kind of Maybe what I think of as like the later sense of of, of of like real exploitation, even though they were meant for more broad-based audience, they were meant to pack drive-ins. Uh, they were they were just salacious and weird, um, and they have crazy monsters in them. Very very interesting makeups. Brides of Blood, uh, out of all of them, has the most kind of like Lon Chaney Wolfman kind of setup to it. Very fun film. Very uh, interesting from a historical perspective to look at, and interesting just in a, in a pure, this movie's gonzo, this movie's weird, it's got a lot of stuff going on, uh, and, and like any kind of um, drive-in, straight-for-business film, the, the exploitation meter, it's, it's either like really bonkers, really wild, or it's like dead boring, and that's that kind of feeling that you have going through these films, where especially watching them back-to-back-to-back to, back to, back to do this um, review, they kind of do start to blend, and that's what makes ending up on uh, Terror is a Man such a kind of nice reward, and we'll talk about that in a second. Second is uh, Mad Doctor of Blood Island. This one actually comes with a, uh, a soundtrack CD, which is very, very nice of Severin to do. This set is unbelievable. I can't believe uh, the amount of extras and things that they've packed into this. Uh, Mad Doctor of Blood Island, I think, has the, the most interesting kind of uh, gimmick, the most inter interesting marketing ballyhoo. They, uh, they put a little uh, bumper in front of the film where uh, a, a guy reads this weird speech and he tells the, the, the teenagers in the audience who, I guess, have been given a little bit of, like, uh, of, of blood to drink, a little bit of green blood to drink. Uh, and he has them recite this oath, and it's really weird. It's a really interesting marketing gimmick. The movie itself is probably my least favorite of the of the four, uh, because it's 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 got these these this weird wobble zoom that they overuse a lot. Um, the the makeup is super interesting. It's super weird. Um, it has elements of if you are a fan of Cannibal Holocaust or, or any of the uh, any of the Italian uh, cannibal movies, it has kind of the exploitable elements of that where you have um, these these islanders like slaughtering pigs and goats. And it's really kind of a bummer, and it, it adds to the uh, it adds to the kind of nausea factor after you have like these these weird gross out sequences of of people laying down with like animal blood and animal innards kind of laid on top of them instead of you know the foam latex that we're used to. And, and there's this wobble zoom going on. It's a very kind of uh, gut churning movie. Uh, I don't I don't hate it. I think it's super interesting. And uh, it looks weirdly beautiful in Severin's new transfer. I just say out of the set, it's probably the one that I jibe with the least. Finally, for the original Blood trilogy, Blood Island trilogy, we have Beast of Blood, which uh, was the most commercially successful of the bunch. Uh, it has kind of the most famous poster, most famous image uh, from the series. And of the three, is probably my favorite. It's got a, a, a talking, uh, disembodied head. It's got a, a mad scientist with uh, an eye patch. I mean, he, 
he he's kind of a holdover. Dr. Dr. Lorca is kind of a holdover from the last film, but he really gets his, his time to shine here. Um, John Ashley is in pure kind of action hero mode. He kind of he's, he's got this weird swagger, and you watch him kind of change throughout the movies, get slightly older, and 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 he's he becomes this almost like um, a good way to describe Beast of Blood, or a good way to describe John Ashley in Beast of Blood, is if uh, if if Blue Hawaii, starring Elvis Presley, had green blood in it, and that's that's Beast of Blood. Uh, there is a uh, a sequence at the end where Eddie Romero kind of really shines, and the thing that he becomes very famous for is helping um, Francis Ford Coppola uh, film uh, Apocalypse Now by getting all these helicopters and guns and all this equipment, uh, and he has this this big action sequence at the end of Beasts of Blood that feels like it comes out of a different movie. We've got th knives being thrown and grenades being thrown and, 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 and prop huts, we're hoping prop huts, blown up with reckless abandon. Uh, it, is, it is a real great capper to watching all these movies where they're all kind of slight variations on the same theme, slight variations on the same set pieces, slight variations on the same characters. You kind of swap out uh, the damsels in distress characters and John Ashley remains a constant and then you have these evil doctors. Uh, but the, the, the nice, the best thing about Beast of Blood is that it has this ending that you don't see in any of the other films. You have the like underground caves and things blowing up. It's really, really wacky, really, really great. Uh, and it has some of the best uh, features on all the uh, discs. So I'll talk about the features for a second now. A lot of the interviews, and there are a good amount of them, there's, there's kind of hours of interviews, uh, but they come from uh, Mark Hartley's film uh, Machete Maidens Unleashed, and they, they all have a little bumper before them that tell you that, um, you know, these interviews were originally conducted to be part of that film. Uh, so if you liked that film, and I really liked it, it's their movie about these uh, Filipino uh, exploitation movies or, or American Filipino exploitation movies, uh, but uh, they talk to mostly the, they talk to a lot of the actors. Uh, they talk to Eddie Romero, who was who was still with us at the time. Uh, they talk to Sham Sherman, who's still with us now, uh, and they, they talk about you know making and selling these movies uh, from all these different perspectives, and they're really really interesting. Uh, the movies themselves don't have a ton of like context there's not a lot you can kind of read into these movies um with the exception of terrorism man which we'll talk about in a second but uh the 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 historical context of making them and what film distribution and what filmmaking was like at the time is super super interesting if you are a nerd like me uh the, one of my favorite things is celeste yarnell uh during this uh during the interview here reveals that she was pregnant while they were filming uh beasts of blood and she had to like tell the crew that like take it easy on her and then you watch and you watch her just get like manhandled and she's like stabbing people with spears and running away from exploding buildings and you're like they they, they had a pregnant woman do this after she told them she's pregnant it's pretty crazy finally we're gonna go out of chronological order and we're gonna talk about terror is a man from 1959 this didn't get released until like years later in the u.s sam sherman of independent international and hemisphere pictures uh did that uh because he was in business and working with uh, Eddie Romero and Jerry DeLeon. This is definitely the best movie of the set, and I don't mean that in like a Mystery Science Theater 3000 way. I mean this is a capital G good movie. Uh, Terror is a Man or Blood Creature as it was retitled to kind of capitalize on Blood Feast and the drive-in craze at the time. But this, uh, if, if the other movies are splattery, goofy uh, goodness, this is a uh, black and white monster movie very much in the classic black or white monster movie mold. Uh, it, it's, it, has, uh, it, it owes a debt to Island of Lost Souls. Uh, it, owes, it owes a debt to uh, the Wolfman and the Mummy. As you can see, the monster is kind of this uh, cat-faced, um, experimented-on creature who's, who's, who's being built into a man. Uh, the, 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 the mad scientist in the center of this movie is trying to like speed up evolution. He's doing it in like the most gross and, and, and mean-spirited way possible. Um, but it, it feels like a, um, like a, almost like a, you know, a, a, a tier, a slight tier below, like a Val Luton, um, or Jacques Turner film. Uh, but it's really, really good. It's well acted. Um, I think the, uh, the whole movie has this kind of, even though it's, it's in black and white, so it's not just that, but it has this kind of film noir, um, uh, fatalism to it. We have a guy washing up on the, on this, on Blood Island, He's kind of almost like this tableau rasa, this amoral uh, character coming into a in, in a more than amoral situation, and 
uh, there's the doctor's wife and he's like has the hots for her and she just wants to get off the island and the islanders are fleeing en masse because they're being killed by this escaped creature. Uh, it's, it's really, really uh, kind of almost downbeat and, 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 and sad and, 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 and haunting, uh, but it's, 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 it's an excellent movie. And, and where I had seen the, uh, the Blood Island trilogy before, I kind of was like, you know what, I'll save that for last because it's the one movie that'll be new to me. And I was completely blown away by it. And even in the special features, everyone who they talk to about Terror is a Man, everyone's like, oh yeah, Terror is a, is a Man is, is the best one of these. Um, and it is by pretty much a country mile. I don't know if uh, Severin is selling this separately, but if you uh, if the set sounds interesting to you, I would uh, I would 100% endorse the set. You you kind of have to get the full feeling for Blood Island to really appreciate uh, how good this one is. Uh, if if they're selling it separately, if you if you just kind of have to get one, if you're working on a budget and if you just want to kind of see the movie and and, and be done with it, uh, I would highly recommend. Uh, Getting Terror as a Man. And if it is separate, I'll put the link down if I find it. All right, that was a lot of yammering about the Blood Island trilogy. Uh, and so for this week's book recommendation, and I don't normally uh, talk about my own books and recommend my own books, but it seemed too perfect not to, uh, I'm going to recommend Tribesmen by Adam Caesar. That's me. Uh, this is the old cover of it because I actually don't, don't have one of the uh, newer copies of it. And there's, uh, in a couple months, there's going to be an even newer version of it. Uh, but I'll put the link down in the description. This is a quick little novella uh, about a skeleton European film crew that goes to a Caribbean island uh, and they think they're going to exploit the natives there uh, to use them as extras in their cannibal movie. Uh, but when they get there, they realize that everyone's dead uh, and the spirits of the island begin to take their revenge on this, uh, this, this film crew. If you just want to listen to an audiobook the same way you might listen to a podcast, uh, there's a great audio production of this done, done by Joe Hempel. Uh, up on Audible and iTunes, and I'll put the I'll put the link for that too. Yeah, really proud of this book. Came out a bunch of years ago. It's going into its third printing, but I think you will like it if you enjoy the Blood Island films. That's it for this week. Uh, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you comment. Uh, if you would like to know more about me and my work, please join my mailing list. I'll send you a free sample. I'll send you a couple stories and stuff like that. Uh, I'm Adam Caesar. This is Project Black T-shirt, and I will see you next week.